In this video, we're building a locomotive shed with variable length, servo power, door automation and inside brick pattern for realistic interior. Hello and welcome to a video tutorial in which we will build a loco shed. <laughs> yeah, I, I got the opportunity to supply a list of of key features for a new locomotive shed. So <laughs> that, I was like, wow, that's great. And the first one was to get a shed which is has adaptable length. So you can build it to 300 millimeters, you can build it to 270 or whatever length you have, you know, depending on what type of steamers you want to fit in there. So that was the first one. The second one, which I've been missing on, on most of the roundhouses or, or locomotive sheds I built so far, is inside brick patterns. And not only that, it should look realistic on the inside as well. So when you add interior and take footage and just look in through the, the door, it should look great. So <laughs> that was the second. And the third, please, Prepare it for that uh, cheap uh, servos, the SG90, you know, you can buy it on Wish, this app in your smartphone for one dollar each. Uh, you can even buy it for less, <laughs> but you know, so, so you truly can build a servo uh, automated doors uh, at, at a reasonable cost and integrate that into your system. So this was the, the key <laughs> features and on top of that of course you get uh, the, the, the very low cost for 3D printing and this uh, shed since it's uh, adaptable length uh, it prints on even the smallest resin printers. Uh, so <laughs> it's uh, uh, it's great. I just had to make a video building it uh, and uh, yeah, here it is. So here's what the basic set for this one port loco shed looks like when it's completed print. So here are all the walls, the roof segments and support parts um, in the print head. So I start by washing them after I've completed the print. So they all go down into this uh, bin filled with alcohol and then I put the washer on eight minutes because there are kind of complex parts with a lot of corners which needs to be cleared from resin. So once dry they look like this. I put them on a piece of uh, bathroom tissue and then we're ready to cut them away from the supports. For that I'm using a scalpel and a side cutter. One thing you need to be uh, a bit careful with is these uh, hinges for the doors. They ha have supports, but uh, the supports need to go, of course, but not the hinges. And then we're ready to paint all the sides of all the parts using a primer. I'm using this one from Tamaya. It's called Fine Surface Primer Light Gray. The purpose for priming is to avoid later skewing of all the parts. It's very important to seal the surface of 3D printed objects properly before painting with acrylics. This is the content of the one port all parts STL which is one file which prints all the parts you need to build a basic shed which is 150 millimeter long. So doors, walls, roofs, truss, uh, front, back wall, windows, doors and uh, then also the base plates on which you build everything. These are the truss and these are the roof ventilation plus chimney. Here's the content of the one port 150 millimeter extension. So if you like me want to have a shed which is 300 millimeter, you can fit longest steamers. You can have this print one of these as well. So there are base plates, the windows, this is the side walls, this is the jo joiners for the side walls. So Every new section needs a joiner and this is the roof parts. The difference between these and the ones in the previous set is that the horizontal gutters do not have an end stop there. So they can just continue. And here's the roof truss and uh, it's another uh, roof ventilator as well. So there is also a one port servo part uh, 
uh, set and it has uh, fittings for the SG90 standard servo and the other truss parts have support for the push rods which does the pushing and opening of the doors then there is a joiner this joiner uh, joins the push rod coming from the servo at this end and in the other end the two push rods going to each of the doors so okay so first we need to trim some of the parts a bit and that goes especially for the base plates uh, these have all the supports in one end and those need to be properly sand away because if you have uh, supports left here this this base plate will be too long and you will not be able to assemble the loco shed properly so we're sanding these and once sanded i use a steel scale which i fixed to the table using uh, carpenter's tape and then i just push the base plate segments together and glue them with fast set glue so this is what it looks like and if necessary use a razor blade or scalpel to remove it from the table and then just check with a track section of your choice to see that everything fits so it does so nice uh, the joints between the the segments of the base plates can preferably be uh, plastered using plastic putty I use an item from Vallejo called 7401 and uh, I just put some of that in the joints before I start painting with concrete color. Uh, this concrete color is, uh, well, I thought it was a bit too dark so I added some white as well and then I got a kind of nice concrete color now we're going to paint all of the wall segments and for to hold them while painting i'm using a modified clothes pin and then i just use my airbrush to spray the brick color now if you don't have an airbrush there are brick color spray cans available and uh, also as mentioned in the intro this shed has a brick pattern also on the inside of the shed which will make it very attractive on the inside as well when you put interior into it it will actually have brick walls there as well so now all the parts are painted uh, then we're gonna paint the windows and here as well i really recommend using either a spray can for the windows or an airbrush if you have i'm going for wooden uh, colored windows so um, in this case I'm using a color from Vallejo called flat earth the roof is a plate roof um, and uh, well I'm selecting um, basalt gray for that and I will use a wide flat paintbrush to paint it uh, I think that gives a nice a uh, bit of streaky appearance which looks nice and just like when you painted the brick uh, paint just a minute ago, it's uh, equally important to paint both sides of the roof, meaning the underside and the top side at the same time. And this is to avoid skewing, of course. The roof truss gets uh, that uh, same flat earth uh, wood color. And uh, then at this time, the brick walls has dried properly so now my intention is to paint a few bricks in each segment in a different color this uh, puts more uh, life into the wall i think so i do a mix i add some orange to the original color as well as a darker brown and then i just paint a few bricks on each segment it doesn't have to be all that many maybe 10 or so and then it looks like this so you can see some of the individual bricks this will be kind of muted when we later add the grout at this time i'm also painting the concrete socket and the molded concrete frame around the door so all the parts around here 
also get a coat of this uh, concrete color. Now I'm adding the grout in between all of the bricks. Uh, for this I'm using a kind of grey oil color which I've uh, thinned using odorless turpentine. And I just put a drop in the edge of uh, each uh, of these wall segments and the grout color kind of floats and gives that nice appearance. I'm also gluing now the scrap plastic to the window frames. Uh, I'm doing this uh, ahead of assembly because it's uh, if you want the interior to look pretty you can't put plastic all over the wall because it does not look all that good. So I just cut pieces of scrap plastic and glue that on too. If you have a transparent resin, you can also print the windows, which are in, I saw that they were in, in this set. So now I glue the windows in place using a fasted glue. So I add glue all around the window frame like this, and then I push the windows in. And the assembly is made from the inside of the wall. And there's an arch on the top, the window is straight in the bottom, so this is what it looks like when properly assembled. Once all the wall segments have got their windows, it's time to assemble the long walls. And to do that we're using this uh, wall joiner. So it's a, it's a little bit of middle piece which fits perfectly in between these so again I'm gluing this using fast set glue and I use a steel scale which I've taped to my table uh, to keep it in place and then I assemble all of the side wall pieces along this uh, steel scale this way I make sure that the wall segment gets assembled straight which uh, wastely simplifies the later assembly so here's my wall segment uh, four sections of each uh, 75 millimeters so it makes a total of 300 now it's time to assemble the doors and just s slightly bend them a bit so they snaps onto those hinges and yeah this is the way very nice and the other one as well we're later gonna put servo drive onto these so then it's very important that the hinges works properly so now the, all the parts are painted and pre-assembled and we're ready to assemble the loco shed uh, into a completed unit and after that we'll put servo drive on the doors so we're first assembling the short wall or the rear wall to the base plate so I'm doing all of the assembly here using facet glue make sure that you get the ends sticking out like this um, on both sides and then we can start by assembling the side walls to that rear wall and again check that you have that little piece of this side wall sticking out in the front so we can add the front wall properly also if needed use clothespin to glue the base plate to the side wall so now we're adding the second side wall like this. I also noticed that uh, if you sand all the surfaces slightly, so both the acrylics and the primer is removed, then uh, the facet glue cures much faster. So now the uh, loco shed is assembled uh, as a unit now we're gonna assemble the roof truss and uh, well 
there are three different type of rows truss. This uh, last one is the one with the servo mount. These servos can be bought uh, at uh, in an app called Wish, and uh, they shouldn't cost more than one dollar each. Uh, you can buy them in pack of 10, 25, or even 100. And uh, it's uh, really cheap. I bought one of these uh, in my local store and they charged $20 for one servo there. So it's a very good idea to instead buy it directly on Wish. So Wish is an app. You go to App Store or Google Play, download Wish, set up as a co a account there and then you can buy tremendously cheap both LED strips and servos. So that's a uh, an, advi an, an advice. So then I assemble the roof truss. They will stabilize and make the local shed more rigid, but they also provide support for the servo drive. And uh, to control the servos, I'm using this decoder from DigiKeys. It's called DR4024. And it was kind of easy to set up. Uh, it acts as a locomotive on with an address of 9,999. So um, then you can set the, the stop point and start point for the servos if needed. It was not necessary, I can say. It was kind of uh, straightforward anyway. And so I just added a new locomotive into my uh, uh, Merklin Central Station 2. And uh, I set that one as a DCC, and then I entered the address uh, 9,999. And I connected this, uh, uh, this decoder to the tracks, and then I changed the address to address uh, 152, and downloaded that into the decoder, so you just hit the programming button, change the address here to whatever address you want the first server to be. Uh, if you have an ESU log programmer, you send CV1 with the value uh, of 152, what, whatever address you want for your decoder. Uh, so, and then it works. And then you can try by activating that um, switch address and it works uh, fine. So. This is how to install the push rods uh, for the doors. I use uh, a 0.5 millimeter thick uh, piano wire and uh, I put the joiner here in the third compartment. So I just I use a side cutter and then I bend this uh, piano wire in a 90 degree bend and then I insert this joiner plate like that. We're later going to fix that with uh, some facet glue once we have got everything in the right position. So here you can see that the 0.5 millimeter piano wire fits perfectly into the hinges of the doors and then I just snap it in in the joiner like this and here it is. So now everything is in place and uh, seems to be working quite well. Then you can take a drop of facet glue to secure just the push rod coming from the servo. I found that the second set hole was perfect for this without any other adjustment. If I take the third one, well then it over pushes so it kind of bends the piano wires. All right, so <laughs> not all that tricky. Uh, uh, there was a, uh, I have a, a small amendment here, and that was uh, <laughs> the first uh, comment I got uh, when I, I preview. I had some guys previewing this video, said, "Hey, you know that you can do this with an Arduino computer, you know, and then it's you have reduced the cost again with uh, like 75 uh, percent compared to that decoder you're using there." And yeah, I know that. But downloading software into an Arduino and building this uh, adapter for the DCC is well somewhat more difficult than just using a decoder. And the second comment I got was, uh, hey, I tried that setting the, the, the decoder address to 9999 on my CS2, but it didn't work. So 
I don't know uh, <laughs> if it does or not, it did here, uh, but it might depend on what version you're running. I haven't updated mine since uh, early Stone Age, so it might have something to do with that or otherwise. Use an um, uh, ASU loop programmer or similar device and set the CV1 to the address you like and problem solved. <laughs> so that's about it. Hey. Uh, do you have use for the information provided here? Uh, like the videos and watch regular on this channel. Please support the channel by becoming a patron uh, from you know like one two dollars per month, or make a one-off donation using the PayPal dialog found in the video description below. And if you're not yet a subscriber, subscribe, enable that little bell, and you will get notification once next video gets published. Until that happens, see you.